So Chris Rogers, Senior Technology Evangelist at Zerto. We're going to cover ransomware resilience with Zerto testing and recovery. Um, if, you're, if you're familiar with Zerto, which I know most people in the room and maybe on the stream and things are, you'll know that this isn't actually new to Zerto, right? Being able to do simple, easy, non-impactful testing is something we've been saying for 10, 12 years, right? But it's even more important when we talk about security. And we need to make sure people test frequently, but also test extensively, not just testing a single VM or a, or a single restore once a week just to tick a box exercise, right? Th those things will pass you audits maybe, but they won't recover you from a cyber attack. They won't you know, recover you from the worst scenarios you're gonna happen. So if you look at the, the customer we have on the screen here, before they were using Zerto, they had three and a half day do DR testing or recovery testing. Now that they've moved after Zerto, it's less than two hours to get that testing done and completed for them. And that's an extensive test as well. But as I said before, no impact to production workloads enables the frequent testing and we don't have to do it out of hours right because we don't we're not impacting the production workloads and it's fully automated and orchestrated failover test so the that run book is reduced so we can help you free up those you know it personnel for, for other things more strategic priorities rather no one likes dr testing i've done tons of them in my lifetime and i hated every single one i did and if you look at some stats on the right hand side i think it's pretty cool so i've heard of customers perform over eighteen thousand tests a month combined and they have an average RTO of three minutes and 19 seconds. I think that's pretty impressive when you look at the amount of tests and the amount of data that's flowing through the Zerto, Zerto um, software and the RTO that we're able to deliver. And then if we look at the, uh, the more proactive parts of being able to do uh, real-time testing or non-impacting uh, testing, because we're replicating those workloads all the time, you initiate a test workflow in an isolated recovery environment or isolated network, however you want to do it in this instance. And then you can use that for whatever you want. Data is only going to be seconds old. So you can use it for you know, patch testing. Use it to speed up the, that, that deployment of that critical patch you need to get out because you know that if you apply it to the patches in this, in this test environment, you know how exactly how the VMs are going to react because they're exact same VMs just from five, 10 seconds ago. So you can speed up that recovery of those, uh, so the rollout of those patches. If you want to do vulnerability scanning, data analytics, data forensics, whatever you want to do in that sandbox environment, we hand the data over to you. We build the VMs, we bring them up from the checkpoint you've chosen on an isolated network, and you do whatever you want with them, right? Again, try to be part of that ecosystem of being, we'll give you what we have, and then you can choose whatever tools you want to layer on top of it to do whatever you want to achieve. And if you look at the ransomware recovery requirements and the architectures that we do have, you know, we can scale various different ways across the, the spectrum so you know the first one being like we do an instant file restore so that could be just for files and folders that have been impacted by ransomware relatively small relatively annoying i'd imagine <laughs> i never had a ransomware attack myself but you know just restoring files back from our journal from seconds previous directly back into the vms that they came from perfect and then we've got an instant vm restore so being able to restore a vm directly back to production systems again within a few seconds and being up in minutes Recovery from a multi-VM app infection. So, you know, as we said with the virtual protection groups, we just do a single failover, bring all those VMs up from the journal, away we go. We have a recovery from a single site infection, where we can use the cloud or our secondary site to, to, to bring up those um, bring up that infrastructure. And um, uh, one thing I don't think we have, have covered this time, but um, is, is historic in the product, is our extended journal copy. So we can recover from a multi-site infection. So if we had two sites that were down, we actually still have the ability to uh, take copies from the journal out, put them into AWS, Azure, you know, object storage, mark them as immutable. And then if you want, you can rebuild your infrastructure, bring that in, bring that um, immutable copy back down and bring those up again. So you don't have to use the vault to get immutability <coughs> from the that is available outside of that. And then number six, yeah. the new one, rapid air gap recovery using the cyber resilience vault. So many different ways and many different architectures of ways to recover from ransomware, but all built into the same platform. You don't have to buy anything additional apart from the vault in this instance. What I haven't heard, you know, I hear this, this idea of like the real-time detection and detecting of encryption. And I know that's, you know, only for VMware. Um, but, and then you, you, you said, okay, we've identified this snapshot as being encrypted or having some encryption in it. So we marked that um you know the snapshot prior to that as being the recovery snapshot from which we're going to right recover that snapshot is still an infected snapshot it's not an encrypted snapshot but it's an infected snapshot and i haven't heard any discussion about that 
Sure, yeah. So again, Zerto, we're we're not gonna replace CrowdStrike or you know any of the other you know antivirus vendors or anything like that. Right, but I'm I'm not hearing anything about a partnership or anything with any of these companies to help with that part because that's the hard part. Sure. It, you know, you, you you're talking about all these RTOs and those RTOs are great, but that's not the hard part. The hard part is this part. So are sure, you helping the with infection. that part? So right now we haven't got any official partnerships with any of the the malware, you know, clean companies, so to speak. Um, you know, we're always open to doing that. We just we we've tried to let customers make their own decision. We assume they already have tools that will do that. We're basically saying, well, we're going to be there when those things don't find it right away, and you need to recover. So. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right. The customer is still going to have work to do. We'll get the VM back to somewhere, right? Like the R site, air gap, clean room, whatever you want. But you will still have work to do to get rid of stuff that, um, you know, was there was just maybe not active yet. Yeah, not, not, that's the idea of having a vault, right? So because you can then risk, risk you can use Zerto to recover. Um, an application by application or a VM by VM into the vault that has no outside access. If it gets re-encrypted, you can just delete it, use the journal again and recover another one. And then you know that that's, that's got some payload in it that it happened. That's the idea of the vault is you can do whatever you want to do with it without it, with it being completely air-gapped with no access to the outside world. So you can then bring your other tooling into that and then bring everything up and scan it that way. You can bring it up app by app using Zerto software if you want and then you know either you know look at what's been infected look at the look at the ones that were tagged by zerto and hit those first right bring those up and then if that if nothing happens after that bring up each app each app each app until something triggers then you can figure out where things happen it is like finding a needle in a haystack but the thing that zerto is going to tell you is there a needle there is a needle in there somewhere right because we've 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 identified some encryption somewhere so again what jp said we have no official partnerships but bring your own tool do whatever you want to do with it, right? We'll give you the infrastructure and the availability and bring those VMs up. If you're if you're using another vendor, great. You still got to do all those steps, but the recovery time to get the infrastructure up is going to be another week, right? So you're, you still got to do all those steps, but you've got to wait a week before you can get all that infrastructure back up so you can start that. That's where we're, that's what we're bringing to the market. So if we look at the, the recovery phase, right? So if we lose site A or production site, we can just do a normal failover into our replication target because it's not been impacted this time. So select tap and VMs to recover. We select a clean checkpoint from the journal. We bring them, we uh, validate them first. We bring them up on an isolated network first, check them, do, do forensics, whatever we want to do, whatever we do, all the discussion we just had there, do whatever you want to do with them, and validate the clean restore point and recover those infected workloads with minutes of them. Before, uh, before you go too much farther, Chris, this slide obviously is meant to highlight the, the new vault stuff, but keep in mind too that Zerto's had uh, one to many, what we call one to many for years. Um, even if you decide not to be a vault customer, I think Chris kind of said this earlier, but you can still replicate to three targets with Zerto with one license, right? So you can take one VM from a source side, go to three different targets. Um, you can mix and match. I mean, you could literally go to AWS, Azure, and VMware. You could go to a cloud provider, VMware, and Azure, like whatever combination you want to do. Uh, and the idea there is that uh, before we had the vault, the idea was, well, chances are with just Zerto replication going to, say, Azure and, you know, no admins having access to that except the guy that set it up. Sure, that's not foolproof, but um, <laughs> the idea is, is that an attacker probably would have a hard time getting all three copies without you finding it, right? So there's alternatives to having the vault that Zerto's had built in for years, um, but now the vault is, you know, kind of that last, like everything's gone. Uh, On the cloud side instance of the vault, do you have anything around optimizing for, obviously when we're pulling data back out of it, we've got egress charges sure. and also just raw storage because I'm assuming that most of the stuff is fully hydrated inside there. Yeah, once once you fail over, um, you know, if you have a, a one terabyte disk, it's going to take up a terabyte. Right. Um, so yeah, we will still do compression on replication out, but egress is certainly a concern. Um, you know, some customers can justify it by offsetting the cost of new hardware. It, it just depends on what kind of model the customer. Or the know, cost produces. of your entire system being offline because right. of an issue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those, that also, check... you, could, you, 
That check is easy to sign when you brought your full environment back up in yeah. a couple of minutes. We, uh, we, we had a uh, customer advisory board a couple of weeks ago in Houston when we did our launch. And uh, one of the, the customers made a good point. It's, it's not so much of, you know, what, uh, what is the risk, but what is the repercussion of not doing it, right? Like, he worked for a healthcare provider. It's not so much of, well, how much is it going to cost? It's, well, how many people are going to die, right? So for them, it's much easier to justify cost because it's, you know, it's not really a, well, the ROI doesn't make sense, right? Like, people will die if he doesn't do it, so. I mean throw you something that'll sound like i'm saying the same question again but i'm trying to throw you a <laughs> sure. bone okay so you know ransomware is really like a set of tools right yep. you know it's not like so even an antivirus mm -hmm. won't necessarily find it right right yep. in fact many of the tools that the that the bad guys are using are the same tools the good guys are using right um so the question is what would be nice i'm going to go back to your api yep. first thing what would be nice is I figured out the the eight pieces of software, the eight files that right. the bad guy has put on my infected boxes. Mm -hmm. Hey, Zerto, can you delete these eight files from all of my infected, all the restored VMs? Can you sure. help me with that using yeah. APIs or something? So one of the things that our engineers have wanted to do for a long time, uh, and we do it kind of with JFLR, our journal file level recovery, is basically mount those file systems and then do things to them, right? Uh, generally, we're just doing recoveries from them, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's not something that we can't do. It's just something that we haven't went down that road yet. Uh, just like the partnership thing. So um, before I was in product at Zerto, I was in the alliances group and uh, we did a lot of partnerships with, you know, the big cloud providers, and we started to work with, uh, I think you guys talked with Morpheus Data yesterday. Um, they integrate with us very well. Um, the, the problem is, is that when you start going down that integration road and get really deep, the, the first thing that a customer wants is, like, their competitor. So then we have to spend a bunch of time going to those. So that's why we've kind of stayed away from, you know, specifically saying you should use this, you know, whatever third party, um, just because it takes a lot of time to partner that deep with one and then have all your customers say you want a different one. But to, to your point, the we- The deletion thing though, right? Yeah. That, that should be an API. Is there an API that says, we this off of my all my recovered? We don't manipulate the file systems okay. today. Okay. Yeah, remember how Zerto essentially works under the hood, right? We don't have a view into the OS. We're completely at that block level, right? So the only way we do is, as JP's mentioned via the JFLR, which we use, I think it's VMware tools we use essentially to inject um, stuff back in. You know, we, again, we don't want to be a cybersecurity product. And actually, our customers have expressly told us that, right? We, you, what Zerto does incredibly well, keep doing what you do well and add some bits and pieces to help me, right? Don't try and be something you're not. I think that's what we've taken on board and what, you know, the product team are listening to is like, this stuff can help our customers, but we, we don't want to be going and picking a fight with, with CrowdStrike and Splunk and all these other guys who are out there building purpose-built products for this, right? We're still a data protection company at heart. Um, so we, we don't want to be going into that. And so we can help you bring up those, those uh, VMs, right? But what if, like, you know, what if we're wrong? What if we're, we're deleting the wrong files, right? Well, suddenly then we've brought up a backup, deleted some wrong files, and then suddenly you go, well, that's the file I needed, right? Why have you, why has my stuff automatically deleted it, right? Again, like JP said earlier, we purposely don't trigger failovers for customers, even though we know when things are down, right? Because we have all the, the, the metrics. We purposely don't do that because of the fail safe, right? We still want that human element to say, this is what we want to do. This is the action we take. Because each ransomware attack is going to be completely different for every single customer. Some customers might want us to do that. Some customers might not want us to do that. Some customers might want us to do different things, right? So we're trying to keep things as, as pure as Zerto as we can, but adding value on top of what we can do and with the data we have inside the stream we currently have. Right, so if, so back to the slide, right? So, um, so if we looked at the cyber resilience world now, right? So, okay, now we've lost both sites. We've lost our production and our replication target. Pretty widespread. Obviously, it hasn't gone to the vault because... I mean, the, the, there's nothing to impact in the vault. The vault's isolated away. Essentially, we're mounting the VSM, VMFS snapshot to the ProLiance um, ESXi hosts via an immutable snapshot. We bring up vCenter, ESXi, and all the Zerto infrastructure we need, right? And then we're recovering from Zerto using the clean checkpoints that were that were that are tagged inside the journal. But a difference 
here is we're actually bringing up Zerto in the vault. So we're not just restoring the snapshot and saying, that's what you've got. We're actually giving you Zerto inside the vault. And then you can use the tools that we have. So the, the clean tagged uh, checkpoints, right? The automation and orchestration that comes with Zerto. So if you've got all your runbooks built in for disaster recovery and ransomware recovery, right? You get those by in the vault as well. So you can bring up all your applications with the right IPs, the right uh, the right boot ordering on the right storage, on the right networks, right? All of that stuff is built into Zerto for our disaster recovery product. You get that inside the vault. Whereas previously, if you're just restoring backups one by one, it's okay, they which network, which this, which that, right? We're bringing you all of the goodness that Zerto brings inside the vault environment, not just relying on snapshots to recover from. For the actual storage of the vault, this is entirely in customer VPC. So this is not like sometimes, you know, again, sort of the cyber tools, they like to say we have like a peered VPC, so they're handling some of the traffic, but this is like entirely customer owned, operated, so we have... Yeah, so uh, th this is HP hardware sitting in a rack in a customer data. Oh, yeah, sorry, I was, I was uh, going to yeah. mistake back to the previous slide we talked about, like a cloud. Yeah, Zer Zerto, um, Zerto doesn't ever store customer data, right? like first party. Uh, we have cloud providers that do that, you know, I or 1111 and, yeah. and Expedient and all those guys. Uh, and then obviously you can you can buy hardware. Um, yeah, we we don't and have never like brought it to our own, you know, first party instance or VP or anything like that. And same for the uh, analytics side? Uh, analytics, we we do bring the stats back to our Zerto analytics instance, which is it runs in AWS. So oh, it does yeah. bring I, that there. And but... I apologize I because I hadn't actually dabbled with that one yet. So when I go to my Zerto analytics, I'm going to a local instance or am I No, no, no. It, it it's runs a it's a it's a SaaS service that runs in the cloud and uh it's all got all like our back and stuff. So when you sign in, basically it's 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 tied in through our you know, back end system. So when you log in with your email address, it says, oh, he's associated with this account and it shows you just your data. Um, so yeah. Cool, excellent, thanks. I have a question about replication that happened between the replication target and the vault. Sure. I'm not familiar with HP uh, Alerta, Alerta. Electra. Electra. I don't know. <laughs> Electra, sure. <laughs> um, I'm not familiar with that solution, but the word air gapped was thrown out a bunch of times. So how does the replication happen if the vault is air gapped? So the question. The idea here is that it's it's air gapped most of the day and it's not on like an Ethernet network. It's sand to sand replication only. So I mean I suspect that if you had enough time and you wanted to purchase Electra arrays to try to figure out how to hack it, you could maybe figure out how to go through a replication port from A to B. Um, but the idea is, is that inside of the vault, it's going to control um, basically when that replication physical port on like an Aruba switch turns on. And okay. as soon as the replication is finished, it turns the physical port off from the inside, basically. It locks the door from the inside, and there's literally no connection into that rack until the next scheduled time when it turns on and lets data come in. As soon as the data is done, it turns it back off. I see. So all other components are sitting inside of it. Correct. It, it literally is a data center in a box mm -hmm. uh, with the exact same configuration as your replication target. So that like literally vCenter and ZVM are, are the VMs that are in your replication target. Uh, the ESX host, you know, even down to the, the ESX host profiles are exactly the same as the replication target. So it is a one for one clone of that target. And so it's the vault solution that enables the port on the Aruba switch and then reaches out to its it's peer here and right. says, I'm ready to replicate, send me your send me whatever I'm supposed to get back. And then once and it's done that replication job, port and then it, it, the, the, uh, again, the, the cool part about the electras is that they have built in immutability, right? So even if someone were to get in to the vault somehow and corrupt the latest data or, or, you know, even if Zerto, obviously we, if you don't tell us to stop replicating, right, we'll replicate the encrypted data and the electors would replicate it into the vault as well. Uh, but the idea is, is that you can't delete an immutable Electra snapshot. Uh, so they even go down to like the compliance level where this snapshot will be here for this many days or whatever you set as the policy. The admin can't even delete them. 
Uh, so the idea is, is that you can present the LUNs for Zerto and vCenter and everything else back from the Electra back as far as you're willing to, you know, keep those snapshots for. Yeah, and, and just building what JP said there, because as you said it's a data center in a box. So the RCIP is like a, it's a very specific protocol. It's not something you can, you know, RDP or SSH into to get into. And, you know, you could, with enough time and money and everything, get there. But you'd also have to be inside the physical security of the data center, right? So you'd have to get past all the biometrics and everything else to get to get into the data center where this is going to be located, right? It's not, it's not something you could do remotely because it's it's just that stand-to-stand -stand connection. So it's that ultimate kind of 